For the last 20 years, my job has been to teach people about wildlife. For about 14 years, I lived in the Bahamas, taking people out to dive with sharks, swim with wild dolphins, teaching them about a lot of the marine life lives in and around the Bahamas. Now, I live in Montana, taking people into Yellowstone National Park, teaching them about the bears, the wolves, the elk, the bison, and a lot of the wildlife that's native to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Over the years, you start to hear a lot of the same questions over and over again, which I don't mind. I like that people are curious about this stuff and they want to learn more about the animals that we share the landscape with. But something that I've noticed that's increasingly problematic is a lot of people come to me with what they think is accurate information about these animals and these issues, but they're totally wrong. They've been misinformed. There's nothing wrong with not knowing. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant. Everyone's ignorant about a few things, at least. The problem is when people have been misinformed, it becomes increasingly difficult to convince them that the information they have is bad and convince them of the truth, especially when we're dealing with conservation issues. Right now, there's a major conservation issue that's unfolding out west here, and that is the proposal to reintroduce wolves into the state of Colorado. When it comes to wildlife issues and conservation issues, there's a lot of sources of misinformation out there. One of them that I keep seeing popping up, talking to my guests and talking to people in the park, it's actually the Joe Rogan podcast. He has some certain hunter friends of his on quite regularly to talk about wildlife issues. And a lot of what they say is just totally false, completely wrong information that they're spreading to potentially millions and millions of people. That's a problem. Recently, someone sent me an episode of the Joe Rogan podcast where he was talking to a guy named Cameron Haynes, who is a professional hunter, I guess, of sorts. And they were talking about the proposal to reintroduce wolves into Colorado. And they were saying it was a bad idea, citing that it would have negative impacts on the elk and the deer populations in Colorado. Thing is, the same thing happened here in the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem 25 years ago. We don't have to guess what the impacts are. We can look at what happened here in Montana, what happened in Wyoming, and what happened in Idaho to give us a better representation as to what we can expect to see in Colorado if the wolves are reintroduced. One thing that Joe Rogan has said many times over the course of many years as it relates to wolves and elk is that the wolves in the Greater Yellowstone area have decimated the elk herds in Montana and in Idaho and in Wyoming. Here's one example of him saying that from an episode of the podcast that I actually really liked where he was talking with Dan Flores. Good luck getting cooperation from people in Montana. They're still stinging from the wolves being introduced into Yellowstone, the, the decimation of the elk population and all the other livestock issues that they've had there. Yeah, so, so they argue at least. Yeah. yeah. When Cameron Haynes was on recently, he basically echoed that same sentiment, saying that the wolves would wipe out the elk and the deer in Colorado. Here's him saying that. Uh, they're trying to introduce the, uh, reintroduce wolves to Colorado. Oh God, don't. That's, you know about all that? Yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. You no. think that's ridiculous? Yeah, and then the wolves are killing all the deer and elk. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So, according to Joe Rogan, the elk have been decimated. And according to Cameron Haynes, if we bring wolves back into Colorado, they will wipe out all the deer and all the elk. Luckily for us, we don't have to take their word for it. The states keep track of this stuff, you guys. Elk are hugely valuable out here. Elk hunting is a big industry. The state takes this very seriously and they keep track of the elk populations out west. So we can look up what has happened to the elk populations in Montana and Wyoming and Idaho over the last 25 years that wolves have been on the landscape. So that's what I did. So we'll use 1995 as our starting point. That's when wolves were first brought back to the area. They were still largely contained into the park at that time, having a pretty minimal impact outside of the park, but they were here. So we'll use that as our starting point. These are numbers coming from the state's wildlife and game offices. You can look these numbers up. So here in Montana in 1995, there was 109,500 elk. Almost 25 years later, 2019, there are now 
134,557 elk. For those of you that are not math whizzes, there's more now than there was before. Maybe Montana is an anomaly though. So let's see what's happening in Wyoming. In 1995 in Wyoming, there was 103,448 elk in that state. Almost 25 years later, with wolves on the landscape, in 2018, there are now 110,300 elk in the state. Again, just like in Montana, there's more now. There is a third state that makes up this ecosystem, and that's Idaho. Idaho also had wolves reintroduced into the central part of the state in the mid-1990s as well. So in 1995, in Idaho, there was 112,333 elk in that state. Almost 25 years later, 2018, there is now 120,000 elk in the state of Idaho. Wolves have not decimated the elk out here. Not only is that wrong, it is the opposite of the truth. There is more elk after 25 years of wolves living and hunting on this landscape. You do not have to take my word for it though. There is a lot of people out there that know a lot more than I do about these subjects. And luckily for us in 2020, we have access to their studies and their data and their information. Earlier this summer, National Geographic published an article on exactly this topic titled 25 years after returning to Yellowstone, wolves have helped stabilize the ecosystem. You can look that up online for free. And the great thing about National Geographic articles online is when they reference a study, they usually put a link to that study in the article. Another great resource regarding wildlife and issues in and around Yellowstone is a publication called Yellowstone Science, which again is totally free and available online. There is numerous issues out there that you can look at that talk about the impact that the wolves have had on the landscape and the impact that the wolves have had on our elk populations out here. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife website also has good information on this subject. If you go to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife webpage, they have a page dedicated to the gray wolf. If you go to the background information page and then click on frequently asked questions, they specifically address this exact issue. What type of impact will the wolves have on elk and deer populations? Will they wipe them out? And very bluntly, the first word of their answer is no. Another great resource when you're trying to learn information about elk and wolves is the Yellowstone National Park website. If you go to the Yellowstone page, click on learn about the park, scroll down to nature, then scroll down to wildlife, then scroll down to mammals, you can read about the wolves and the elk and their relationship in the park and their relationship on the landscape outside of the park. There's also a Q&A tab where you can hear the lead wolf biologist, who is also the lead elk biologist, talk about a lot of these myths and misunderstandings that Joe Rogan and his hunting buddies seem to perpetuate so often online. And just to be clear, just because there's now more elk in Montana, in Wyoming, in Idaho, doesn't necessarily mean there's gonna be more elk in Colorado, but it also doesn't necessarily mean that there's gonna be less. Elk are not gonna be decimated by the wolves. Deer are not gonna be wiped out by the wolves. That's just not how nature works. A lot of professional hunters are opposed to predator reintroduction programs. And in a bizarre coincidence, PETA is also opposed to predator reintroduction programs. All of these people are wrong. They're advocating for a less natural, less healthy ecosystem. It's the last thing we need to be advocating for right now. So if you live in Colorado or any other state, 
that proposes reintroducing predators of the landscape. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened in the greater Yellowstone area. You don't need to guess. You don't need to assume. And you don't need to listen to people that have no idea what the fuck they're talking about.